right, guys. Hello. It's Thursday. They're like, why is Colleen live on a Thursday? She doesn't ever go live on a Thursday. I think everyone knows like Wednesdays I'm live, Mondays I'm live. Well, we're live today because I have a very special guest with me. And the reason why I asked Jennifer to come forward was because I'm getting ready to get on a plane tomorrow. In fact, my alarm went off. I checked in for my flight this morning. I'm so excited. I have a boarding pass to get onto Southwest Airlines and fly to Chicago tomorrow. Like I used to travel all the time. I miss it. And I think there's a lot of fear around traveling right now. How, how do, what, do, what do I expect in the airport? What's going to happen in the plane? Is it safe to be in the plane? Um, where can I go? Am I going to get quarantined? What are the hot states? There's all this stuff this panic, this fear. And I want you, Jennifer, today as the expert of traveling, like you are the travel expert in my world. Help us understand why there's no need for us to be afraid. You just got back from Mexico. Let's talk about how being prepared can help you feel more at ease and will give you the opportunities to go and enjoy the, some of the luxuries that are out there right now so we can get away from this craziness because don't we all need that in our lives? Like, come on, I need it. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and I will say that I sympathize and empathize with uh, being nervous about traveling. I was nervous before um, I got on a flight and um, it's scary when you watch, you know, all of the cases of COVID and all the, the noise going on. And then you think you're putting yourself into this like can with, you know, a couple of hundred people. Um, so I think being prepared is really the best thing that you can do, but it's also about really knowing the facts about this and beyond that 60% of the COVID cases came from, you know, nursing home and senior centers. You take that off of there. They're not the ones that are traveling. They're not the ones that are sitting on planes with you. Um, I love that Ed Bastian, who's the CEO of Delta Airlines has been making the rounds on TV lately, sharing what the airlines are doing for safety and not just Delta, but in general, just like dis Dis dismissing all of the myths out there that like they, you know, buzzwords are recirculated air. So you think that you're sitting on a plane and the air that's from next to you is getting recirculated. And that's not what it means. Recirculated air is the vents that are above get sucked down straight below. So you make this like cone, right? It's not the vent here getting hit behind you. That's why I kind of, they aim it at you and it goes down. The sucking of the air is from the bottom of your seats out of the plane and it goes out. Recirculated as they take the air in from outside of the planes, they use these HEPA filters and it comes down. So you're breathing air probably better than if you were sitting in a restaurant with other people and the air conditioning is going on. Um, and Bastion also shared that for their employees, the flight attendants, the people working at the airports, the, the pilots, they have a lower ratio of getting COVID than even regular people in a town. So like their ratio is so much safer because they are wearing masks. Um, they have a lot of the touchless systems in place. So even, you know, you have your phone and you can get your boarding pass on your phone and you just stick it underneath the reader. You're not touching people. The Delta specifically is boarding back to front. So, you know, it used to be great if you were flying business, you got to sit up front and then everybody walked by you. But remember now they're breathing or even if they're wearing masks, they're touching you. So they board from the back to the front. And I brought some wipes. I brought hand sanitizer. I, I actually boarded last, legit last. And um, I did that on purpose because I didn't want to be breathed upon, but I also flew American and they are not boarding back to front. So, um, but it was interesting. I think a lot of people had that idea because the first four boarding zones were probably next to maybe three or four people. And then it was the next ones they started to get, I think more people wanted to board later. Um, but I always think it's best to get on the plane, have the door shut behind you and be like, I'm ready to go. Uh, I don't like waiting what? anyway. So, um, and you know, we, the, the airlines are not doing the uh, drink service. So you get a bag, less time of contacting anybody, you know, touching anybody, you get a bag when you walk on the plane for all of the airlines that are over like three hours. Some of them are also doing just like bottled water that you pick up when you walk on. 
Um, I do suggest that if you're going for a longer period of time to maybe bring some stuff with you or purchase some stuff at the airport. Some airports are very shuttered down though. So if you're used to having your favorite spot to like go and eat, it might not, it might not be open. I usually pack an empty kind of thermos and fill it up after I get through security. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I didn't use the bathroom on the plane either. Like I tried to stay in my little safe zone. Um, and I have to tell you, I've never seen the airport so clean. <laughs> and I flew to Cancun and you could have eaten off of the floor. It was that clean. And even in Mexico where I was, I felt that they took it more serious than back here in the US. Um, and that's what I have found from even my clients. They say they're very surprised at, you know, you have some health questionnaires you, you have to answer when you go to other countries. Some countries are requiring proof of a COVID test, a negative COVID test. But we flew back into the U.S. and there was no questions asked. There was no hand sanitizer around when you're waiting for your luggage. It was almost the opposite. It was, it felt safer when I was in Mexico and every hotel, like you walk into the hotel, they take your temperature. They have the plexiglass, like last where you check in, the doors are sealed. Like even the remotes had like, were in like these plastic bags that were sealed. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt better going there. It, I was nervous before, but now I feel like, especially for our clients who want to get away, um, they have lower stats of COVID than we do in the U.S., especially in a lot of the beach destinations. So, um, you know, if you're looking, if you work remote and you want to work remote from be gone for a couple of weeks, a lot of these hotels are also offering like free laundry and free like kids club. So I think about the moms going back to, you know, work and they can't and the kids can't go back to school, but you could technically go to some of these resorts. Kids could play in the kids club, you know, and you could get your work done. Um, I felt really good about it. I'm happy you're getting on a plane because we need tourism. Like we do, yeah. it funds our country. Yeah, yeah. And I was just telling Jennifer before we jumped on here that, you know, my husband and I are, I think we need a vacation. We are used to traveling and taking vacations and being in a lot of different states or uh, being out of the country. And for the first time, we, you know, we haven't gone anywhere since March and it's kind of taken a toll on us because I, we're working, you know, triple the amount of time that we would normally work because we would be traveling before. So I, th I think it's really starting to hit us. Like we need a break, you know, like a, a legit break, like to, to get away. And even if you change your scenery, I've talked with many women that go to their lake house or they're going and renting an Airbnb at a lake or Whatever it may be, if you're just looking to take your family to get on a vacation in the States, I think what Jennifer just shared, or I know what Jennifer just shared, offers me um, really great advice. A, I always bring a water you know, thing with me empty. I fill it when I get through. So that's number one. I didn't even think like, oh, I should bring extra snacks. Maybe I need to think about getting a drink in the airport somewhere. If I want something to drink on the plane, I'm used to getting it on the plane. I need to get that before I get on the plane and bring that in my bag with me onto the plane if I want snacks or a drink because we can't rely on them to provide that for us. And I say come prepared. I already travel with hand sanitizer, have for like the last several years. When you walk on the plane, by the way, uh, for the last several years, I've asked the flight attendants right when I walk on the plane, do you have any wipes? And they'll hand me like two or three that they've got there, you know, in the little packets. And I always wipe down my seatbelt, my armrest, and my tray because I work on that tray the entire flight because I have my computer out, so I'm constantly working. So I'm touching all of that around me. And before it was like you don't ever want to touch any of it because it's never clean. But now they're cleaning the plane in between everything, like not just picking up papers. <laughs> they're like cleaning it. You know, it smells clean. Like for the yeah. first time, it really smells clean. Yeah. I also sat on a window and I, you know, I had the wipes and I kind of like, I was a window seat. If you are a little bit nervous, um, mm -hmm. I would spend the money to pay to be closer to the front because they do uh, like, so they, they will dis disembark the plane from the front on. So if you have a tight connection or you get, you just want to get out, like yeah. I always seem to get off of the plane and go right to the bathroom. So, um, I liked being upfront, but also being by a window provided me a little bit more, I think of like that 
Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not going to have anybody touch me or come by me. If you're nervous. Now I have an immune suppressed condition. So like I was more, I mean, you have to wear your mask. So get a comfortable mask. And I would practice, like, I didn't think I could wear a mask for like the, from the time you get to the airport off of the plane, but it became like second nature. You, you, I kind of felt like I had a phantom mask later that night. I kept saying like, oh, it feels like I'm still wearing my mask, but I'm not. <laughs> um, and I got a, I got a real easy one that was a scarf. I don't know if you've seen this, it's a scarf and you can just lift it up and like put it there. So it was cool. I just, I didn't worry that I was going to drop it someplace. It became yeah. part, part of me. And, you know, on the way home, I was not nearly as nervous, not nearly. It's always that first time that like step out of comfort zone. And I'm so glad, so glad I went. I can see people wanting to travel. Um, yeah. I do think we have to take seriously being safe. Um, so before I left, I took a COVID test. Um, even though Mexico is not requiring it, you're not required to take it if you're going you know, to Chicago. Um, I just did it because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't maybe passing along something that I'd show up with, or if I got to Mexico and like, you know, the symptoms came on a few days later, um, but also just to see how easy it would be to get it, because I think this is going to be our future. I think until we have a vaccine, they're going to want people to get to show proof that they didn't have that. And I traveled with people that had flown from Wisconsin, that flew from New York, and they actually got that tested as well because they wanted to be able to hang around me and not be worried that they could possibly yeah. bring that. So I don't think it's something you should be worried about if you have a trip to Jamaica and you're from a state that requires that or Aruba yeah. or St. Lucia. I think it's more important, get over that. It's kind of like back before 9-11 when you yeah. had to suddenly start taking your shoes off, you know, or empty yeah. your water bottles, right? Yeah, some totally it's, different than we had never dealt with before, you know, bringing only three ounces of liquid through. Right. And then now it's just normal. It's second like nature. So this is our new reality and it's new. So you have a lot of questions and I don't doubt that you've got, um, you know, unfamiliarity with it, uncertainty with it. And that's okay. That's to be expected. So educate yourself. And I really believe one of the best ways to educate yourself is to contact Jennifer. So Jennifer, I know that you're going to leave your contact information at the bottom of the video in the comments section. So please, you guys, DM Jennifer. She's opening herself up to if you've got questions, you want to know if you're traveling somewhere. You know, something I learned from Jennifer talking on the phone was um, the, last week and why I wanted to do this was because I wanted to plan a trip to Maui. And she said, if you're going, plan 14 days. Because when you get there, they have to, you have to stay for 14 days before you come back. And I said, oh, I, do, I wouldn't have known that. You know, I wanted to fly over there because Southwest goes. My husband's still on my companion. You know, they're extending it through next year. And we wanted to take a break and work remotely. And she said, well, just make sure you take a 14-day break. And I was yeah, like, oh. because, because right now they, you know were, they, they closed it all off. Originally, they said that come August 1st, they were going to require a negative COVID test. But now they've said, no, we don't want people to, to come, even with a negative COVID test, but you're going to be required to self-quarantine for 14 days. So if you are in a VRBO or an Airbnb, they're going to get your address. They're going to make sure that you're, or they were doing a one key access hotel like thing. So you would have to get to your hotel, get the key in, and then they take the key away and they would have you get food delivered. It's crazy. They really wanted to turn people away from traveling there, you know, our passport used to get us to close to 200 countries. Now there's barely 30. And so it's, and, and even then the requirements, you have to know what's needed. Even if Jamaica says you're from a state that they don't need the COVID test, you have to fill out an online form at least 24 hours before. So if you go to get on that plane and you haven't filled it out, it's too late. So you need to use the resources that travel advisors can provide because we are slammed with details every day. Things are changing every day and they're going to they're going to continue to change, I think, until we get a vaccine or we develop that herd immunity where everybody's like, OK, we're over. We're over this. Yeah. Um, which I hope is I hope is soon. We need people to travel one in 10 uh, Americans, but one in 10 around the world have a job related 
to travel, whether that's the person that brings the food to the flights. If there's not enough planes, that job is, you know, is gone. So that represents if one in 10 um, people, that's actually 50% right now in tourism are unemployed. And that 50% equates to more unemployment alone than what was during the Great Depression. So we've got to start, if you want this com economy yeah. to start bouncing back, we need to not be as scared and hide in our houses. That's why yeah. I had to go. People said I was crazy, but I was like, you know what? I go to the grocery store. I'm, I, I think this might just be yeah. okay. And, and I have to tell you, I felt better down there. Yeah, good. All right, you guys, you hear from Jennifer. She is our lead up for women expert. So I'm gonna ask that you contact her directly, educate yourself, understand what you need to know for your next travel plans or just contact her to find out what you need to know so you can create your travel plans. And she can help you create your travel plans as well. That's what she does. So her and her team is available for all of you um, to be educated and to, to plan your next adventure. So thank you, Jennifer, thank you for, uh, for being me. with us today. It was just awesome. So thanks, you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your week and have a wonderful weekend. Wish me luck on my plane tomorrow. I'm super excited.